Hi, welcome to my channel. So far in this series, we have seen that how we make connection with our database server using Spring Boot and also seen that how we save and retrieve data from the tables. But we are not validating the user input before persisting it into database. In our current entity definition, we are not checking the data for constraints and checks like not null, size, and range limitations. In simpler word, we can say that with our current configuration, we can try to persist the null value in a table field which we have marked with not null constraint. However, this attempt is going to fail with SQL exception. So anyhow, we are going to get a message that what exactly caused the failure and we can also handle that exception either using built-in Java exception classes or custom exception classes. But there is a major issue with this approach, which is we are generating unnecessary traffic to our database server. If we are talking about a small monolith application with limited number of users, it won't cause any drastic performance issue. But when it comes to architecture like microservices or application with good number of user requests, it will certainly cause a performance issue. So it is always better to validate your data for constraints and checks and respond back right away with a clear message if validation fails without submitting the data to the database server. So today in this video, we are going to see that how we can validate user inputs using validation annotations. So without any delay, let's get started. In order to use Spring validations, we need to add one more dependency in our pom.xml file, which is Spring Boot Starter Validation. Right, just save it. For this video, I'm going to use this employee entity class and will put different type of validations on these properties. Right now, in our database, we have this definition for our employees table. And according to this definition, we cannot persist null value in any of these fields except left on. So let's first annotate all these fields with not null annotation here. Okay. At the rate not null. Copy this here here this one too this two this two and this one okay save it to speed things up i have already added this endpoint add employee in our employee controller dot java this function accepts the object of employee in request body and i have also created this method save employee in employee service class which accepts the object of employee which user has passed and then I'm calling the save method of employee repository to persist the data of employee in our database. Now to force Spring to validate all these properties just upon receiving this employee object here on this endpoint we need to annotate this request body with at valid annotation. But before jumping on that Let's first check how Spring behaves when we have these validation annotations here on properties and do not have at valid annotation before request body. At what point these validations are going to take place? To check that, let's do some sysout here. Say inside endpoint. Copy this go to this definition and before persist save this now run the application i'm not going to pass the department here because i want to trigger this not null validation okay now let's submit the request we are getting status 500 internal server error. Now let's see what's going on here. We are getting exception, okay? And 
we are also getting these two sys out here inside endpoint and before persist so in this case the validation took place before the persistence of employee object into database right now let's add this at valid annotation here save this kibli terminal run the application again now hit this endpoint the status is changed we are getting 400 bad requests so let's see what's going on here now we can see that before printing that spring is actually validating this employee object okay if it is not valid it is going to simply return from here and not going to execute codes which comes after right but the response that user gets is not clear okay it says 400 bad requests but it is not clear that the department is required field here however in console we can see that message that department must not be null right so now let's see how we can throw the similar kind of message with response if the input is not valid okay so let's do that kill the terminal now let's remove these sysouts first save it now let's add the custom message that we want to show to the user and for that we need to set the message property of validation annotation okay so in case of not null it should throw department is required okay let's save it now we need to create one class to handle the response entity exceptions okay for that let's create one folder here let's say comments and inside this i'm going to create a new file let's say global exception handler dot java right now we need to annotate this class with controller advice and this class is going to extend response entity exception handler then we need to override a method which is handle method argument not valid okay remove this let's create a map of string and object this is going to be our response body new hash map let's collect the list of errors which will be thrown by the binding result in case of any validation exception okay errors equal to exception dot get binding result dot get field errors dot stream should be errors okay stream dot map let's pass this object and let's say get default message dot collect collectors dot to list now let's add these errors in our map okay body dot put and here let's say errors now return the object of response entity first we need to parse the body then headers then status okay save this now run the application hit this endpoint and we are getting the clear message that department is required okay now let's see a few more type of validations that we can apply on our properties Okay. the age should not be null and if it is null then show the message that age is required right and the minimum required age is let's say 18 and if it fails throw the message the minimum age requirement is 18 save this now run the application let's pass 17 here okay send the request 
the minimum age requirement is 18 okay the department is also required so we are getting the clear message that what exactly the application wants from the user let's see a few more now let's say we want the department should accept only alphanumeric value for that we need to annotate this property with add pattern annotation and inside that we need to set the pattern in the form of regular expression okay for alphanumeric let's say 0 to 9 and a to z okay and if the validation fails we need to show this custom message department accepts only alpha numeric value right save this run the application this time let's pass the department value is let's say it underscore zero okay send this here we are getting the message okay similarly we can also validate the length of the string using annotations for that let's say department again the size of the string should be minimum 10 characters and maximum 50 okay if it fails throw the message department accepts only up to 50 characters and minimum 10 characters okay save this now run the application send the request okay department accepts only alphanumeric value and accepts only up to 50 characters and minimum 10 characters right these validations are not limited to entities only you can also validate the request parameters okay for example we can also validate this request parameter here so let's see how we can do that in this particular endpoint employee by id we want the user to pass employee id which is greater than zero okay so the minimum value is required for this parameter is one okay if it fails then throw the message employee id should be greater than zero okay and we also need to annotate our controller with at validated annotation now let's run the application and we are going to hit localhost 8080 slash employee employee by id equal to zero okay send this and we are getting 500 internal server error now we need to handle this response similarly how we have done with the entities and to do that let's create one more function here which is response entity type of string handle constraint validation exception and let's say constraint violation exception and inside this we need to return new response entity and here let's say a message error and ex dot get message comma http status dot bad request okay and we also need to annotate this function with response status http status dot bad request okay and exception handler is constraint violation exception dot class now save this kill the terminal run it again again hit this endpoint now employee id should be greater than zero right 
So this is how we validate properties of the entity and request parameter using Spring validation annotations. So this is it for this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye and take care.